worship at First Baptist Church Brantford in this season of Epiphany, and we welcome all who are joining us online. Thank you to all who are participating in our service. And now, please join with me in our call to worship as printed in the bulletin, and we'll follow this with our opening hymn of praise, Arise, Your Light is Come. Arise, shine, for your light has come. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. Nations shall come to your light. The people who walked in darkness, those who lived in a land of deep darkness, let us celebrate the light of the world. to receive your enlightenment. We open our hearts to be infused by your love and our spirits to be drawn into communion with you. As we reach out with open hands to one another in the fellowship of the community, prepare and strengthen us to go from our worship to share with others the gifts of Christ with which you bless us here. Amen. Our first lesson is in Colossians, it's Colossians chapter 3, 12 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. 
and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your heart sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Please join me now in our responsive lesson, which is Psalm 67, printed in your bulletins. Psalm 67. Be gracious unto us, O God, and bless us, and let the light of your face shine upon us. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples righteously and guide the nations of the earth. The earth has yielded its harvest, and you, our God, have blessed us. Your blessing, O God, be upon us. May all the ends of the earth revere you. Amen. And reading also from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, 22 to 40. The time came for the purification of Joseph and Mary, as the law of Moses commanded. So they brought the child Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. At that time, there was a man living in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. He was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. The Holy Spirit was with him and had assured him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's promised Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Lord, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at the things Simeon said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple but worshipped there day and night with fasting and prayer. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had finished everything required by the law of God, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Thanks be to God for this gospel. Today we move out of the Christmas season Beyond the simplicity of Luke's story of a humble birth with angels and shepherds, 
We are in the season of Epiphany, shifting from rejoicing at God's coming among us to reflecting on what that means for us. Epiphany is the season to remember and celebrate the mission of the Church. As the light of the sun strengthens and lengthens each day of this season, so we are reminded that the light of Christ reaches ever further into our hearts and into the hearts of the world, even into its most troubled places. Luke is the only gospel writer to tell the story of how, in obedience to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought the baby Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem for the ceremony of consecration of the firstborn son. It is in the temple that we are introduced to Simeon and Anna. Both are described in ways that highlight their devout and righteous living. As will happen in the Gospel of Luke, both men and women are shown as significant actors in the story of God. Simeon is not given an age, but we know that he is waiting for his death. At the same time, God's Spirit had revealed to him that he would not die before he had seen the Messiah. The Spirit guided Simeon to the temple, where in one of the most tender scenes in Scripture, he encountered Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. Simeon has the distinction of being the only person in the Bible who are, we are explicitly told held the Christ child in his arms. As he cradled the child, Simeon spoke the wonderful poetry that is called the Nunc Dimittis from the first words of the Latin translation now you dismiss. This simple prayer com combines the quiet, intimate confidence of a humble and faithful servant of God with a bold and comprehensive summary of God's purposes for all the world and for history. Now you are dismissing your servant in peace, O Lord, Simeon said according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. In words both prophetic and descriptive, Simeon said that this Messiah will be a light for all people who live in a dark world. Through the incarnation of Jesus Christ, God extended the special covenantal relationship he established with the Jews, as recorded in the Hebrew scriptures, to the Gentiles as well. This is the same message that the angel spoke to the shepherds on Christmas night. I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all people. After praising God, Simeon blessed the family. Then he turned to Mary and warned her that a sword will pierce her soul. Words that are predictive of many painful experiences during the ministry, passion, and death of her son. Simeon's blessing introduces a crisis. To this point in Luke's narrative, the birth of Jesus has been all joy, but Simeon foretells the conflict that will come. The redemptive action of God in Jesus Christ calls for a response, a decision. Many will reject him. Many will speak against him. The inner motives of many will be revealed, thoughts that are harsh, unloving, full of greed. 
Pain and heartache will follow for the young mother, for as Simeon implied, the shadow of the cross appears early in Luke's gospel. Simeon was not the only one the family met in the temple that day. Nearby stood Anna, a widow who had lived alone for most of her 84 years. Her work was prophecy. When Anna saw the baby Jesus, she gave thanks to God and proclaimed to the faithful people who were gathered in that place that this baby is the one who will redeem Israel. This makes Anna the first person in the Gospel accounts to become a witness and preach the good news to others. Luke closes this passage by telling us that Mary and Joseph returned to Nazareth where the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This meeting in the temple between Jesus, his parents, and Simeon and Anna is an easy one to overlook. Yet as we take a closer look, Simeon and Anna come alive to us, and as they come alive, we learn that they are not peripheral characters, but the earliest witnesses of the Gospel, awake and alert to what God is doing in the world. Through faith and by God's Spirit, they were able to see the extraordinary meaning of such an ordinary event. Here were two persons who were able to see with clarity the true meaning of what was before them. Behold your salvation. While others that day saw only an infant and his parents, Simeon and Anna saw the redemption of God. Friends, when we hear the song of Simeon and the proclamation of Anna, we hear that Jesus is the light who shines in the darkness. His kingdom is the one where all are valued and loved as treasured citizens. We hear that this baby born in Bethlehem will usurp military power greed, violence. Redemption will lie not in earthly powers, parties, or rulers, but will come in a child born in Bethlehem. We hear that God's beloved will be the one at work among the poor and the marginalized, among those who metaphorically cannot find a room in the inn on Christmas Eve. We hear that God will be at work among those who work and pray faithfully for the peace of the world. We hear that redemption will come in the one who heals the sick and cures the lame, who speaks truth to power and proclaims wisdom for the oppressed. When you and I hear the song of Simeon and the proclamation of Anna, we hear that our experience of Jesus Christ is connected with the larger story of humankind across all the generations. The good news is that everyone is accepted and we can all share the good news of God's love for all people in the world. Friends, with Simeon and Anna, we have seen in the face of the Christ child God's long-awaited redemption. And having seen and believed, let us now be dismissed to go into the world with the good news of God's love come among us. Let us go forth knowing that God has acted graciously in the person of Jesus Christ, for in him we have seen our redemption, and we rejoice. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Friends, the offering is an expression of stewardship and worship. Through our offering, we express gratitude for God's goodness and blessing while acknowledging our willingness and joy in sharing the work of God's kingdom. There are offering plates at the four doors and you're invited to place your offering at end of service. Let us pray for the offering. You have nurtured us, O God, sheltered us and fed us by your love. As we have been given, may we give freely, fully and thankfully for our many blessings. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for bringing us to the start of another year. We thank you for your graciousness to us in days past, and we pray that your name be hallowed and your goodness affirmed in the year ahead. You make known to us that whatever takes place within this world, you remain as always God. And in our relationship with you through Christ, we are secure, never alone, always on a journey home to love, to security, and to peace. Give us a broad vision of our responsibilities to one another so that we will have compassion enough to meet one another's needs. Lead us to plant the seeds of concern in the hearts of others and to tap the wells of generosity so that hands and hearts may be open to your great love. Help us to be ministers of mercy and ambassadors of truth as we bring good news to our world in Jesus' name. Your desire, O oh God, is for our wholeness and well-being. We hold in tenderness and prayer the collective suffering of our world at this time. We remember all affected by COVID-19. We pray for those who are sick, for the lonely, for families that are separated. Strengthen and encourage those in public health services, in the medical profession, all frontline workers, all who commit themselves to caring for the sick and their families. Inspire, give insight and hope to scientists, researchers, and many others focused on treatment. Sustain all workers and employers who suffer loss of livelihood or financial hardship because of shutdowns, quarantines, and other restrictions. Guide the leaders of all nations that they act with justice so that all people may find access to life-saving treatment. We pray for your healing presence in the lives of those who are ill from other causes, for those struggling to recover and return to health. We pray for all who grieve. May they know that neither life nor death can separate us from your love. We lift before you all who are hungry, without homes and shelter, those who are fearful. We ask you to bless our country. May we strive to be good citizens, building a nation worthy of respect where differences and diversities are honored where justice is done, especially for the least, and where people in desperate need are welcomed. And now in silence, we bring to you our most intimate concerns. Teach us anew how to embody Christ right here 
and for all those whom we meet. We offer our prayers in the name of Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our concluding hymn, O Word Made Flesh and Come to Dwell. and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever.
Welcome to First Baptist Brantford Sunday School. My name is Marv. Together through prayer, story, and scripture, we will learn of, learn of God's word for us today. Let us begin by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today I'm going to read from John chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. And then I will tell you a story which is based on that scripture lesson. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the, or from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael, and Nathanael and said to him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there, Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me, Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree, Philip. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig, fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Samuel listens. Samuel slipped under the warm covers I checked that the lamp is burning and that the old priest Eli is asleep, he thought, as his eyes closed. Samuel had been helping Eli in the sanctuary since he was a little boy. His mother had prayed for a baby for so long that when he was born, she dedicated him to God. Samuel knew she prayed for him every day, although she only saw him once a year. Samuel was sound asleep when the boy spoke. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel peeked from under the covers. He slowly opened his eyes. No one around. It must have been Eli. Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, Eli. You called me? Eli grumbled a bit and then opened his eyes. I did not call you, my child. Go lie down again. Samuel went back to his bed. He pulled up the covers and quickly went back to sleep. Again the voice woke him. Samuel! Samuel. Samuel peeked from under the covers. He slowly looked around. No one there, so he got up and went to Eli. Here I am, Eli. You called me? Eli said, I did not call you, my son. Go lie down again. Off to his bed, Samuel went. Back to sleep, sure enough. Samuel. Samuel. Slowly, Samuel got up and went to Eli one more time. Here I am, Eli, you called me? This time Eli sat up. No, I didn't call you. I think God is calling you. Go lie down, and if you hear the voice again, say, Speak, God, for your servant is listening. Samuel did as Eli said, but Samuel could not go back to sleep. His ears were wide awake. Then the voice said, Samuel, Samuel, speak, God, for your servant is listening. God gave Samuel a message to give to Eli. God also had special work for Samuel. Samuel would be a prophet, give messages from God to the people. Samuel would help the people follow God's way again. Let us pray. Dear God, help us to listen to your call to us so that we may carry out your will, even though it may not be easy to do. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Friends, wherever you go, God is there. So whatever happens, you are not alone. Thank you for joining us. Bye for now.